All right, today we'll be doing the Confluence CVE 2023-22515 lab on October 4th, 2023, Alashian release security advisory regarding the CVE 2023-22515, a broken access control vulnerability with an assigned CVSS score of 10. The vulnerability was introduced in versions 8.0.0 of Confluence Server and Data Center editions and is present in versions 8.3.3, 8.4.3, 8.5.2. According to Alashian, the vulnerability has already been exploited in the wild. An attacker can exploit the vulnerability to create an additional account in Confluence with full admin privileges. The attacker needs no prior information to exploit the vulnerability. The vulnerability is believed to be enabled other unknown attack vectors and should be patched as soon as possible. Start the VM. Deploy the VM, so we'll go ahead and start it by clicking Start. And once you start it, you should see your IP address there. All right, we'll go ahead and click Complete and move on. Understand the vulnerability. Confluence initial setup. When running Confluence for the first time, you go through the initial setup, which allows you to configure some basic parameters and create an admin account. The initial setup can be reached by navigating to this following IP. So I'll take that. And I have my Kelly box here. Go ahead and put Kelly box up to the front. What I recommend you do is just create a new tab here. I'm going to go ahead and put in the, our host IP address in a bit. Let me open up Chrome. Put our host here. Okay, I'll change the name of that tab to our host tab, and then for the our host tab, which is the our host, I'm going to go and change that to the IP address of my Kelly box which changes usually. All right. Great, now we're here at the login screen and I'll go ahead and continue. If you try to access the initial setup after you have completed it, you won't be able to go through the setup again, but will be greeted with a message stating that the setup process is already complete. This is normal expected behavior and would normally not be useful for an attacker at all. Enter CV 2023-22515. This vulnerability allows an attacker to re-enable the initial setup process. In doing so, the attacker can go through the setup of creating a new admin all over again. This is all possible because Confluence is built using the Apache strut framework which depends on the xwork package. xwork allows you to define actions in the form of Java classes. Each action can be invoked through the URL and the corresponding Java class will handle the requests. Do whatever actions requires and emit a response. To clarify how actions work, navigate to this. You should be redirected here. The URL calls an action bound to a Java class to handle the login attempts. When an admin is invoked through its URL, the execute method of the class will be called by default. Calling getters setters via Xworks. We also call greeters and setters in action classes by using a URL specifying an HTTP parameter with the chain of attributes we want to get slash set. As an example, if the login action class 
had a set ID method, we could invoke it via the following URL. This would execute set ID one, two, three as defined in the corresponding action class. Chaining getter setters to re-enable the initial setup. The reported exploit takes advantage of the service info actions. The reason for picking this specific action is that we build a chain of getter setters for it to set the configuration parameters that turn the initial setup, setup on or off. If you analyze the code of the server info action class, you'll see it extends the confluence support class. By doing so, it will inherit all the methods as well. One such method is the getter that returns a bootstrap status provider object. We care about the bootstrap status provider class because it is another getter method we can use to retrieve an application configuration object. As you have probably guessed by now, this object contains the application configurations, including an attribute that tells Confluence if the initial setup has been finished. Such attributes can be modified by using the setter in the application config class. If we call the setup complete false, it will effectively re-enable the initial setup. Pulling it all together, we can chain that of getter setters by accessing the following URL. This will effectively translate by X work into a call to. Now go to your browser and navigate to the following URL to trigger the vulnerability. You should get the following response from the server. All right, so we'll take this and enter this into the URL. Open up a new tab. So we're telling the actions that the setup is not complete. Create an admin account. Now that we have access to initial setup once again, let's browse to initial setup actions, fill in detail of the new admin, and click next. Okay. And we'll keep the information the same. Okay. If all goes well, you should get access to confluence with the admin privileges. In this class, we have gone through a quick explanation of the vulnerability. If you want a more in-depth look at the technical details, you can check out this Rapid7 blog. Log into Confluence with the new credentials. What is the value of the flag posted by the admin? OK, let's go in here, click Next. Save that. Click Start. And we're in. Here's the flag. All right, task three, 
automating exploitation. As we have seen, exploiting this vulnerability is relatively straightforward and can be done manually using a single request and a regular browser. Even so, automated exploits are readily available. This one is uh, developed and you can download it here. On the other hand, if you need to test many servers to see if they are vulnerable, a simple vulnerability scanner was developed by Eric. It can be obtained by his GitHub. This one will not exploit the vulnerability, but will test for it. And we are instructed to read the script. What is the name? Of the Confluence user it creates. Let's click here. All right here is the script here, and we can read the exploit.py. All right, and we'll look for the user. self. All right, I'm put self in, but oh, actually it's not self. Oh, it would be whoever you logged in is, right? So let's go. All right, so the user is right here. Please patch. Great, and I wanna give that script a try. So what we'll do is um, download it. So this is the GitHub with the exploit. We will now download the exploit. And once we download it, go over to the folder and we'll go ahead and get clone it so that we can copy the exploit to our machine. Once it's done closing, cloning it, go ahead and enter the file. And here's the exploit.py. We've got a readme file and requirements text file. So we'll take a look at the readme file. You have to have Python 3 installed. And you would put in the target URL. And where we would like to uh, save the vulnerability server's information. All right, so those are prereqs. Uh, we'll go to return requirements. Go ahead and open the terminal here. Okay, now that we have the terminal open. Go ahead and open up the read me, read me. Put that over here, scroll up. Looks like you need to do pip install requirements.txt. So we'll go ahead and go here, grab this command. Come here, paste in that command. It's gonna install 
requirements. All right, looks like it's done. Go ahead and grab this command here. We'll edit it. And put in the applicable information. Okay. All right, with that, go ahead and And put this command here. And you can see it's created a new user. With the new user created, we can now log in. So let's go back over here. We'll take this all the way from the top. So we're at the login. And we'll use New users information that we just created utilizing this uh, script. All right, now you can say we created this new user. They're an, an admin and all we had to do was simply run a script against the URL. It ran the auto exploit here that created an admin user and set their password. And we're able to log into the Confluence server as an administrator here. Now this can be bad for a number of reasons to include, you have now gained access to the Confluence server. All right, we'll go ahead and move on. So detecting and patching. Should you have an instance of a vulnerable version of Confluence, be sure to check the following. The network access logs pointing to the setup actions. There's no reason for a regular user to request such URLs after installation. The network access logs to the server. Review your Confluence users and look for suspicious accounts and members of the Confluence administrator group. Patching, all vulnerable instances should be upgraded to at least one of the following versions as soon as possible, 8.3.3, 8.4.3, and 8.5.2. If upgrading is not possible immediately, access the setup endpoint may block as a temporary measure. To do so, add the following security constraints inside the web app tag, confluence install dir confluence web xml. This would block them from initiating the setup once more. This will effectively restrict access to the setup. 
Remember that the mitigation instruction should should be considered a definite patch, but only an interim measure. Server should be upgraded as soon as it becomes possible. Is the Confluence server version 8.2.0 vulnerable to CV 2023-22515? And according to the information here, it is. Does applying mitigation actions replace the need to upgrade Confluence? No, you, the mitigations can always be circumvented. And a lot of times when you have a CVE, shortly after the CVE is released, uh, that allows something like RCE, remote code execution, or in this case, just creating a new admin account, it's possible that the um, malicious actors will then create another exploit to then circumvent that patch, or in some cases, even use that patch um, which was made very quickly um, and find weaknesses within that patch to then gain other privileges. And that's that's occurred in the past. All right, so conclusion. In this room, we have analyzed a broken access control vulnerability in Elastian Confluence Server and Data Center that allows attackers to create new admins in the vulnerable application. As we have seen, exploiting the vulnerability is trivial, making it imperative to patch Confluence servers as soon as possible. The vulnerability has been fixed in versions 8.3.3, 8.4.3, and 8.5.2. Any new version branches should also be safe. Since the vulnerability was found to be exploited in the wild, checking our servers for indication of compromise is also important. Remember that vulnerabilities have likely been used by nation actors as confirmed by last June. All right, we're going to click the complete, and we complete the room.